The Durango and Silverton Narrow Gauge Railroad operates steam-powered tourist trains on the 45-mile-long ex-Denver and Rio Grande Western Silverton Branch Line in southwestern Colorado. The railroad begins in the town of Durango and runs along the Ananas River, traversing several bridges, passing through the San Juan National Forest, and clinging to the edge of cliffs before finally reaching the town of Silverton. During the summer months, regularly scheduled trains travel the entire route round trip as many as four times per day. In the winter, trains only run as far north as Cascade Canyon. Every August, the Durango and Silverton holds a Railfest event. On this special occasion, various pieces of equipment are trucked in to run on the rails of the Durango and Silverton. One of the usual visitors is Eureka and Palisade No. 4, a 440 American-type locomotive built by Baldwin Locomotive Works in 1875. Eureka is a very unique locomotive, being the oldest narrow-gauge wood-burning 440 currently in operation in the United States. At Railfest each year, the Eureka pulls several trips over the Durango and Silverton. Some of these trips cover the entire line, and some are round trips to Cascade Canyon. Come along with us as we follow the Eureka on one of these special Railfest trips as it travels from Durango to Cascade Canyon and back again. The morning sun casts rays over the town of Durango, Colorado on a warm day in late August of 2011. The 13th annual Railfest is in full swing now, and people from around the country have come to Durango to attend this event. Earlier in the week, equipment was moved in by truck to participate in Railfest. Durango and Silverton No. 486 moves about the Durango yard in preparation for the first regularly scheduled departure of the morning. After pulling past a switch on the north side of the yard, the locomotive reverses direction and backs onto a set of passenger cars waiting at the depot. Historic buildings line the streets of Durango, many dating back to the time when the railroad first came to town in the 1880s. Tucked in behind a row of tourist shops is the original Denver and Rio Grande Depot. It has been renovated over the years, but the building appears much as it did when it was first built in 1882. The building, along with all of the right-of-way from Durango to Silverton, were purchased from the Rio Grande by the Durango and Silverton Railroad, which began operating trains on the route in 1981. In the yard, Eureka and Palisade No. 4 is being prepared for its run to Cascade Canyon. Eureka, as it is known for short, is owned by Dan Markoff, a Las Vegas area resident who purchased the locomotive and restored it to operation. Diesel No. 1, nicknamed Hot Shot, is one of several units purchased by the Durango and Silverton for yard switching and work trains. We see Hot Shot here waiting in the Durango yard for its next assignment. The original Durango Roundhouse was destroyed by a fire in 1989, and this new roundhouse was built as a replacement. It houses both repair facilities for the locomotives and a small museum. At the 7th Street grade crossing to the north of the station, we see Eureka and train switching tracks during a similar excursion at the 2010 Railfest event. Because it was built when railroad cars were much lighter, Eureka can only pull a few of the heavier Durango and Silverton cars at a time, even though these cars are quite old themselves. 
It is for this reason that most of the excursions pulled by the Eureka on the Durango and Silverton are never more than two or three cars in length. Eureka backs into the depot with its two-car train and comes to a stop to board passengers. With all the passengers now boarded, the Eureka, passenger car 311, and caboose 0540 leave the station for the 26-mile trip to Cascade Canyon. The shrill sound of the locomotive's original whistle breaks through the quiet morning as the Eureka heads out of town. Now paralleling the Animas River, Eureka crosses 32nd Street. Animas River Valley is full of greenery this time of year. The train will be making a brief stop just a few miles ahead in Hermosa for servicing. At Hermosa, Eureka comes to a stop to take on water and fuel in the form of fresh cut wood. More sand is added to the sand dome on the locomotive. The train is moved up several feet to a wood pile so that wood can be added to the tender. Now that all servicing is completed, Eureka departs Hermosa for the steep grades ahead. Tall pine trees surround the line on both sides as the train climbs further and further up the mountain, leaving civilization behind.
Eureka approaches the crossing over Highway 250. This is the last public road crossing on the line until Silverton. About a mile ahead, the train will make one more stop for servicing at Rockwood. The train has just left Rockwood and is passing through a rock cut. Soon it will be entering the San Juan National Forest, passing by some of the most spectacular scenery on the route. From here on out, the line is inaccessible to the public. This is the High Line, arguably one of the most scenic portions of the Silverton Line. Hundreds of feet below the track, the Animas River flows through the bottom of the gorge. Trains are limited to only 10 miles per hour through here due to tight curves and limited clearances. The first photo run by location is just a few miles ahead. At the High Bridge, the Eureka stops for the first series of photo run-bys. The train backs across the bridge. And once all the photographers are in position, it charges up the hill past the photo line. With the run-by concluded, Eureka is once again on the move as it passes the siding at Tacoma. Tank Creek is the location of the second photo stop. After the photo run-by, Eureka will take on water at the water tank located here. Although the official destination of this excursion is Cascade Canyon, ENP number 4 has run about a mile north of the Cascade Canyon Y to perform one last northbound run-by at the Through Truss Bridge over the Animas River.
With the runby concluded, the passengers will reboard and the train will be turned on the Y at Cascade Canyon. For the return trip south, we will follow an excursion the Eureka made in 2010. Galloping Goose No. 5 moves slowly along the east leg of the Y at Cascade Canyon. Eureka has already been turned around, but must wait for the line to clear before moving on to the main. Now that the line is cleared, Eureka backs a mile to the north to do a run by at the truss bridge before heading back to Durango. At the cement wall just south of Tank Creek, Eureka makes another southbound run by. Two Baldwin Locomotive Works products simmer away while passengers get off for some sightseeing. On the left is Denver and Rio Grande 315, a consolidation built by Baldwin in 1895. This hydroelectric power plant is one of the few signs of civilization at Tacoma. Built in 1906, the plant generates about 28,000 megawatt hours of power each year. Due to its remote wilderness location, workers must access the plant by rail. With passengers on board, the Eureka departs for Durango. We get one last look at the Eureka before arriving into Durango as it flies along through the valley just south of Hermosa. Following close behind, a work crew in a speeder checks for small fires ignited by cinders from the Eureka. After a full day's trip from Durango to Cascade Canyon and back, Eureka pulls into the Durango Depot as part of the parade of trains during the 2010 Railfest event.
Now at the 2011 Railfest, the Eureka No. 4 and Galloping Goose 5 have already been turned around the balloon track at the Durango Yard as train No. 464, a normally scheduled train from Silverton, pulls into the depot. This wraps up yet another exciting day on the Durango and Silverton Narrow Gauge Railroad.